are you one of these chicks like me that sit here playing slow jams to force yourself to cry because that is the mood that I'm in today you know when you wake up and you're just like nah it's too much I can't get this relationship game too right you know um I think men and women generally really struggle to understand each other I don't I think we're from you know say Mars and Venus I think we are from completely different planets I think communication is a massive struggle in relationships I think I think women are very simple we want to be attended to we want to be loved we want to be cared for we want to be prioritized we want to be communicated with we want to be desired we want to be in the top 3 things of what you want to do on your daily basis we want you to call us we want you to send us a text in the morning to say good morning babes we want you to send another text to say that you're thinking about us we want another text to say i wish it was you lying next to me and maybe another one to say i've just woken up and you're the first thing on my mind in the middle of the night you know people don't understand how simple women are we are creatures of emotion give us that emotional response and be emotionally available to meet our needs allow yourself to be expressive allow yourself to tell me exactly what you're feeling but don't bullshit me because if you're not feeling it then you're not feeling it but if you are feeling it don't tell me that you're feeling it but you just can't say it this is 2020 men are allowed to cry we are allowed to cry we're allowed to have an emotional response to stuff that happens it's real out here it is so real hard things happen to men and women we are not looking at you as um weak granted if you cry every day like it's a bit much in it like calm down dear like grow up here however that's not what we're saying if something ha- sad happens then you're within your right to cry the same way that we're within our right to feel and all we want to feel is like we mean something we cannot interpret body language someone once said to me look i'm here in it and that should tell you that i've missed you really maybe it's because you i've i cook well and you actually like my food or you're feeling horny and you want some sex or i've got all the cable channels and you wanted to watch a particular movie or that your mom was getting on your nerves because you live with your mom do you know what i mean so really and truly actions don't always mean more than words sometimes it's the words and the actions that make sense to me i am <laughs> nearly 40 can you believe it blouse and skirt nearly 40 who would have thought in my in my later 30s that i would not be in a meaningful committed relationship with a man that will wipe my bum when we get old that's another thing that we want we just want to know that whatever happens to us however saggy our tits are however much we lose our memory our hair grows it gets thin we decide to have locks because that's a black woman's thing we gather get locks or we get bullied whatever it is we want to know that you're going to be there and you're not going to look away and you're going to realize and feel the love i want to stick to the love i want to stick to us because that's what we want we want consistency i say it over and over again i just want you to be consistent I want you to mean what you say and say what you mean. I don't want you to bullshit me. I don't want you to fake it. I don't even want you to wing it. I want you to know that when you step to me, you have to step correctly because I am worth it. That's what I want to feel and it's not a self-esteem thing. But your role as my partner is to help me to feel like I'm worth it. That this struggle is worth, you know, making it happen you know people come into relationships with their baggage i ain't gonna lie my daddy was an alcoholic and he loved women my god the man loved women you know my mum she had serious depression 
And so she wasn't always emotionally available for me. So I, I grew up a lot on my own. I, I became who I am because of me. I know that. I am this person because I raised this person. And, you know, if you've grown up with parents that have had depression, alcoholism, drug misuse, you learn to fend for yourself. But you also become this person that still craves love from others. If your dad has abandoned you and he left your mom when he was a baby, you do look to men, you know, to fill that gap that your daddy didn't do. To to look at you in the eyes of a father. To take care of you like as if you were dad. To want to put you first like as if you were his child. Why don't people get that? That, yeah, if something was missing from my life, that maybe I do want to find it somewhere else. And I think it's okay to do so. Are we got to say, we got to be real and say that it's missing. But any dude I date, I told him my life story. My life story is out to the world. So I'm not ashamed. I'm not scared. I'm not scared of how you're going to react when I tell you that I have low days, flat days, whatever. But what I need you to know that this, I'm a big woman and I need big things. And I'm not talking about big things of the sexual nature. I need, well, I need that too. But what I do need is you come in with a full package of seriousness. You don't have to be perfect. None of us are perfect. But dudes, they come with daddy issues too. If you've seen as a man, your dad womanizing, I wonder what hope you've got to be any different. I think most men that ha- like that have a, ma- a dad that was a womanizer, I don't think you en- you know any better. And even though you try to, f- to hide it and fight it, I think intrinsically that's in you. That is in you. You are guaranteed to be in one portion of your life, a gallus, a guy that likes the attention of women, an attention-seeking man. It's easy to spot. But we still go for him. And we think that we can give him all of the attention that he needs. But no. He needs the Fiesta. He needs some time to drive the Corsa. He needs some time to drive the Mini. Or even jump in the seat and see how the seat feels. I'm not saying all men cheat. But all men seem to want attention from elsewhere. And I don't think women want that. I think a woman is very content with their man. When they're a serious woman, because I don't, I can't talk for non-serious women out here. When you have a man, you focus on him and his needs. Men don't have the capacity to do so, and I don't understand why. And if there are any guys out there that are able to tell me, is it because of oh, men are natural-born hunters? They're like lions. They like to roam. That is absolute mess because the majority of these men experience women that they know ain't no good for them or do anything for them. They don't cook. They don't clean. They don't do nothing. But yet they still go and entertain these dirty gal. Why do it? You're, You're risking it all. Risking it all for what? Is it that you don't have a brain? Is it that you don't have the common sense to see what you're getting yourself involved with? It's like I was asked in the last podcast whether I've taken a man back that's cheated. And I had to think about it. I don't think I have. And I say I don't think I have. Because when I've got tangible evidence that leads to me knowing that you've cheated, I leave. But if I haven't got tangible evidence, I don't think there's enough to leave. I can't leave on speculation however if someone slides up in my dm and says that your man did this screenshots of whatsapp screenshots the chat the chats shows me a little side picture that they had of him i would be an idiot if i didn't leave and for those that stay in those relationships oh no it's idiots i'm just gonna let you know i I still probably like you but you're an idiot i don't think i'm that girl maybe i was back in the day no i wasn't i was never that girl i thought i was actually you know, a hot toy back in the day. So no, I wouldn't accept that. But sometimes you don't have enough evidence. Sometimes you have that gut. You know, your gut is talking to you. and You know that your man or woman is doing something. Me, that's not enough to leave. Some people leave on a whim. Some people decide to leave really good relationships for non-evidence-based decisions. You need evidence 
either you seek your evidence and you come to me with the evidence or the evidence comes to you. And I also want to think about the friends, the friends that know that my man is cheating on me and you're not getting involved and you're not saying nothing. I've been in this recent circumstance that there's people that's probably listening to this pod that knew that I was being done dirty, but never said anything. None of you came to me and said, Cam, I'm not trying to wreck your thing, but this is what's happening. And I need you to look after yourself. I need you to protect yourself. I don't have the evidence, but I've heard. And this, at least then it will pique my interest to be able to be a bit more conscientious and listen to them sly phone calls or see when he's taking calls in the drive and not coming in and then blocking off the phone and hiding it under his pillow. Because you can't leave a man because he hides his phone under his pillow. But what you can leave a man for is to hide it under the pillow. When you ask him to show you, he says no. And your brethren has told you, well, actually dun 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 and this next girl has said to you dun 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 and his boy has said dun 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 then you're like you know what that's enough evidence that's all we need and I think you have a responsibility as friends to start talking up the things there was a scenario that I had that a very good friend of mine tried to back my situation in public when they saw my man doing something inappropriately now some girls would be like happy that their friend backed back them. Some would be mad. Why are you hating? Why are you trying to ruin my relationship? I'm not that girl. I was happy that my friend told me. Did I leave him? No, I didn't, you know. Am I idiot? <laughs> Maybe. So am I contradicting myself? Probably. Because when I say it out loud, I did have tangible evidence of him doing something inappropriate. Now that's the difference. Doing something inappropriate versus doing something that is obvious cheating is different and harder to attend to. Now, what is inappropriate and what is cheating? For me, cheating is having sexual intercourse with someone that ain't me while we were in a relationship. Cheating is someone and making yourself emotionally available. Is cheating crubs in a dance with an next gal Is cheating going to drinks with another girl she's given you you've given her my time with you you've neglected your family you've neglected me to go out and hang out with her but is that cheating for me it's a forgivable offense if it doesn't happen again and you will be heard in court in the court of my heart for that and you will be tried accordingly and then after that you'll be given punishment such as a tag and you will not leave my side for the rest of your life but you can live with that, right? Because I'm a bad B. You love me. And I'm worth it. But there are different measures of what people will or will not take. And I think this is where men get confused. Because there's some girls that will take something big. And there are girls that will take something really small and say, I'm not having it. But for me, I don't take anything anymore because I've been hurt. My heart has been broken and shattered into pieces that I can't even mend. But I'm damaged goods. And should someone with dam- be damaged goods be going into another relationship? Because I tell you, no amount of uh, yoga and self-help books are going to mend these broken hearts. But I was watching something the other day and in China, they mend um, pottery. You know, like the blue and white pottery. They mend it with gold glue and they then become the most expensive pieces of art and pottery in China. So they're not the the, the broken ones are fixed. And that's how I see myself. I am broken, but I'm fixed with with love and with intent and with passion to want for more so just because I have been damaged don't mean that I can't be used and don't mean that I can't be valuable and doesn't mean that I can't be loved again and cherished and put on someone's shelf I don't even want to be put on a shelf I want to put in your bed but you know there are there are a lot of pressures getting into someone in a relationship with someone that has been damaged men I find more so when a man is damaged, when a man has been cheated on, when a man has been hurt, when a man has been 
harmed emotionally by his mama. Oh Lord, when his mother has done him something wrong, come like they can't repair ever. Every woman that comes after will never get the love she deserves. I believe a man that has no relationship with his mother is a man that you really have to take with a pinch of salt. I'm not saying don't love him, but just know that his issues may come up. I love those guys, you know, because I do have mother ring capacity, but we all know that that ain't got me too far. Because I, I, I'm a woman that loves to love. I love to mother you too. And I don't judge you just because your mom mistreated you or you don't have a relationship. But I do know now from experience that that man comes with his own baggage. He comes with his own issues that maybe are about respect for women, trust for women, love for women. Why would I put myself with a man that has all those issues? Because I've got issues. That's why. And no matter what daddy or mummy issues I have, I must say that I just need to be cared for in the same way that he needs to be cared for too. Do you know how many times I've said, I'm done with man, you know? I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm not in it. I'm not dating again. I'm not dating till 2022. That's a lie. That's a lie. Because if Mr what looks good right now guy comes along just know that this guy i'll entertain him and i'll i'll have such high hopes even though i told my brother no 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 i'm being careful this time you know i'm not even giving my heart away because i don't trust these dudes but john no camilla loves love she loves to love and she'll fall madly truly deeply as i always do why don't i le learn why am i so hard is not that I look for guys and I wonder, am I, why am I attracted to the guys that particularly have mummy issues? Is it because I have mummy issues? Or is it because I want to be someone's mummy? And then can I be mad when they don't see me sexually anymore and they just see me as someone to look after them? How can I be mad? We're all damaged, you know. But I just think we need to start taking care of each other more understanding these issues we need to understand our issues we need to be mindful of our issues we need to come to the table and be honest with our issues and not worry about being judged because if he was really for you then there would be no issues he would understand respect where you're coming from and not use them against you I've been in another situation that I've told a man about my low mood, for example. At one point, I was depressed, you know. And I told him. And I said, I'm going to the doctors. I'm going to therapies. And, and, and you know, babe, I need you. It was all good while we were good. But you see, when we got bad, you know, he said to me, nah, she's a mad girl. She, no, she told someone else, that's it. She's a mad girl, you know. She goes, bear therapy. She takes bear tablets. I remember that. You know, my heart was so broken because I told you that in trust i told you that in our oh, good times are you gonna then go out and talk the business like even when i break up with someone i don't really talk about them in terms of our personal stuff like i keep our secrets i think there's integrity even if you've broken me and hurt my heart i'm not gonna talk your things you know because i wouldn't want you to do the same for me but people go out there they're in relationship and they start chatting shit about that person not necessarily lies. They're like, well, when I was with him, he told me that that's not your place to now be saying and telling people's stories out on road. Why would you do that? You wouldn't want it done to you. I'm not done with man. And there is a man out there that's been hurt that say, I'm done with girls. But if the right girl comes along, well, she looks like the right girl. You're an entertainer. You might be a little bit more reserved, but you're entertainer. I always tend to go back. I meet someone new and I say, oh, he looks different. He sounds different. He's different education, different upbringing. I might even say, oh, he loves his mum this time. But you see him, he's probably as bad as the one that didn't love his mum because maybe they didn't talk about their issues. I think that people need to be transparent. I'm not 
and I hate liars. I hate liars. Like we were talking in our podcast about having um, let women that raise or women that make men raise children that are not theirs. What kind of psycho ho are you to do that? I, and if you're listening, I'm, I would love you to DM me and tell me. You've had a baby with someone else and you've met, but you've been sleeping with someone else. And so you decided that one of these guys is going to be the dad. You didn't go and do a DNA test, but you've picked in it. You've picked. And the child is now 10. Who's been growing up knowing that this man that isn't their dad is their dad. Do you know how many lives you reckon? Why would you do it? Why? For what? So you don't look bad or to ensure that the man is still in your life? Are you so desperate for love, for his attention to do that? Maybe you are. I can't even judge you because I know what it's like <laughs> to want love. <laughs> Sometimes we do desperate stuff. I have done some, you know what? Sure. When I've been done before, yeah. I've written letters, poems, emails, gone to your yard, asked your mum to talk to you, asked your best friend to talk to you. I found your brethren on Facebook. I've told them. When you really want something, you go for it. What's the most idiot thing you've done to try and get back a guy? I have done some real idiot things. And I'm embarrassed. I can't actually talk the things because the people then would know that (laughs) but I've done some foolishness I have written long letters eight page letters you know I've been like Aaliyah what she did she did a four page letter right whatever I've done an eight page letter and I've poured my heart and soul and the dudes blanked me so let's not waste our time now I just type it because I can but if you really want something I think it's worth fighting for and if I love you and you left me, there's a high likelihood that I'm going to run you down. Because I think, like, you should want me to. I really do. Why you don't want me, though? This is what I can't understand. Why you don't want... Do you, like... I am five star. Why don't you want me? (laughs) That's all I need to know. (laughs) Sometimes I just need to know, why don't you want me? And if you tell me, I also will then tell you that that's not good enough reason. Women don't like to hear And I think that's the moral of my discussion. Women don't like to hear. We don't like to be dumped. We don't like to be rejected. Nothing that you like done to you do we like done to us. So can you stop doing it, please? If you want to break up with us, have that conversation and say, this is not meeting my needs. I need you to be this version. You're not that version. You can't be that version. Thank you and good night. Have a conversation. Communicate with me, please. Communication is key. From my talk with Dee, it was really clear that we are on way different wavelengths. You know, you like want us to take, like one minute you want us to look good. So we have to wrap our hair at night to be able to look good because we're conscious that should we wake up looking like a troll? You're not going to like us. But at the same time, you don't want us to go to bed with the headscarf because you want us to look sexy all the time. But then you also tell us, that you, you know, them Instagram models, they're fake. They're not real. Well, this is real then. A headscarf is real life. I've also met the man that's woken me up and told me, put on your headscarf, babe. He's like, it don't matter if you've got it on. What, what, where is he? He had other issues, isn't it? He must have daddy issues. I don't know. We must have been poor or tight. men that are tight I can't bear them either I'm not looking for your money you know and I've said I'm not doing little Kim why spend mine when I can spend yours that's not what it's about but I want you to show me that you want to make an effort for me that's all that's what I'm looking for but we'll talk about tight men in a different podcast but right now we're focused on understanding and you know there was a song by All I need from you is understanding. Someone tell me who that was. It's simple as one, two, three. I can tell you what I need. Them, you see that those words? You lot, man, them, go and listen to that tune because that's what I need. All I need from you is understanding. 
be patient, be kind, be loving, be gentle. I am precious. I am precious and I'm worth it. So treat me like that. Anyway, you lot, until next time.